Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to diagnose an overheating problem with your outboard. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through the cooling system on your motor so you know what to look for if you're experiencing an overheating issue. Now you want to address this quickly because an overheated engine can lead to all sorts of problems downstream that can do lots of expensive damage to the inside of your motor. And we don't want that. So if you're ready, let's go. Okay guys, every outboard is a little bit different, but basically the story is that water gets drawn up from the lower unit, pushed into and around the power head by the water pump, and then pushed out of the motor. Now there are five areas along the path of water will take through your outboard where we might find a problem. The first two are really straightforward. Water in and water out. So let's start with the output. Some people call it a telltale, and it does just that. When you see water flowing out of it in a steady stream, you know your motor is running and at least water is flowing through the cooling system. Now keep an eye on that, especially if you don't have a temperature gauge or some type of indicator. Because if you see the flow decreasing, it's a sure sign that something is going on down deeper in the motor. But just to be sure, you want to check it for obstructions to make sure you don't have a clog right at the output. Now, on the other end is the water intake, and it's a common place to find a lot of overheating problems. The water flows in, but so does any trash, leaves, plastic, or anything else it can pick up as the boat moves through the water. Now, there's a little cover that prevents trash from moving up into the cooling system, but it can get clogged up, and that can keep water from getting into the cooling system where it needs to go. Now, if you've checked the intake and the output and they're both clear and you're still not seeing any water come out of the telltale, then you're gonna to have to dig a little bit deeper. The third place you're going to want to check is the water pump. And it sits at the top of the lower unit of your outboard and pushes water up into the power head. And that may be your problem. To inspect it, you need to remove the lower unit on your outboard, and we've got several videos addressing that process in getting you to the water pump itself. Now inside it, there is going to be a rubber impeller that is driven by the drive shaft. And over time, the rubber gets brittle and wears out and can break. Now if that has happened, it can create a couple of problems. First, a broken impeller fin is not gonna push the water up into the power head. But second, Pieces of those broken impeller fins can get loose and cause obstructions deeper inside the cooling system. Now, if you need to replace yours, we have several videos on how to do it. And you can buy just the impeller itself or the entire water pump repair kit for several manufacturers at boats.net. Now, if your water pump is in good shape and you don't have any obstructions on either end of the cooling system, this fourth area we're going to check out could be your problem. The thermostat controls how much water moves through the power head, and if it fails in the closed position, it's going to shut off the water through the entire motor. Now, they can also fail in the open position, but that's a bit of a different problem where so much water flows through the motor, it can't warm up, which is a completely different story for another video. Now, you can't repair a thermostat. If it goes bad, you just need to replace it. Now, keep in mind that some outboards have more than one, and if that's the case for your motor, you pro should probably go ahead and replace all of them, since if one's wearing out, chances are the other one's about to go as well. Now, if all else fails, you're left with the fifth thing you might have going wrong in your cooling system, and that's a clogged water channel running up and to around the power head itself. Now, the way to prevent a lot of that is to flush your outboard after every use, especially if you run in salt water. On a newer outboard, well, it takes a long time to get that kind of buildup, but an older unit that hasn't been maintained properly can have enough salt and marine gunk in there that it will slow down or stop the water flow completely. And that's a harder problem to fix once you get those passages clogged up inside the motor. All right, guys, there you have it. Just a few places to check out if you're experiencing overheating issues. And just remember, if you flush out the outboard after every use and follow your manufacturer's guidelines about replacing the water pump impeller, you can dodge a lot of those issues. 
Well, listen, if you need cooling system or any other parts for your boat, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at boats.net and we will see you in the next video. You have a great day.